What's up, everybody, and welcome back to A Beer A Day with TK. It is a nice, cool, snowy afternoon here in Finley, Ohio, and I'm hanging out in the beer shed getting ready to check out a new beer. The beer I have today is called Russian Messenger, and this is from Round Guys Brewing Company, which is actually a very cool name for a brewery. As a round guy, I approve. Um, so I guess not surprising, I'm using my Fatheads Brewery glass today as I don't have a Round Guys pint glass but this is from round guys brewing out of lansdale pennsylvania so lansdale is kind of just outside of philly um, and this was a, a hookup from wayne allen uh, a friend of the show he sent me a few beers that i've reviewed over the last year or so um, always thrilled to see the stuff he, he picks up because it's always top of the line it's always really good stuff from smaller breweries that i would never see out here anyway i went to the round guys brewing company um web page i think i had one of their beers before but i don't think i did a review on it, it might have been one Pete or someone else sent me. Um, but I, I went to the website to check them out. And it looks like they do ship their beers, but only to Pennsylvania, unfortunately. They did have food on the um, photo, you know, the banner photo or whatever it is for the food section. That's going to be cooking up a cheesesteak, which had me feel nostalgic, wishing I could have a beer and a cheesesteak. Uh, Super Bowl is almost upon us, so it's kind of the anniversary of the Eagles winning the Super Bowl a few years ago. So I was thinking, head back to a Philly uh, beer. Now, I would like to have the cheesesteak to go with it, but it is what it is. Uh, it looks like they usually have about 16 beers on draft, so pretty decent selection for a smaller place. Now, uh, the artwork on here is pretty cool. If you see, it kind of looks like a, you know, maybe a Russian hitman or a military guy. We see he's got the Yushanka hat on, and it looks like two briefcases. No, are there any briefcases? I think there are briefcases in his hand. And some kind of machinery around him. Um, it said the cover art was done by John Comerford. So I'm guessing that's who, who put this together. Pretty cool. If I can find the link to him, I'll throw it down below. Um, see what else we have on here from these guys. Not much else. Just kind of their Insta and Twitter handles and Facebook and all that stuff. Looks like they're just Round Guys, Round Guys Brewery. Um, again, artwork is pretty cool. 9.8%. Huh, interesting. I'm looking at my card here, and it says 9.6 on the websites, but it says 9.8 on here. So, I mean, I'll go with the can. I assume they know what they're that they know what they're doing and they're right not untapped or beer advocate or wherever I got that number from. So, um, like I said, Imperial um, Stout. So, hoping for something good here. Could we get any IB, uh, ABV? We got IBUs, no listing. So, ratings-wise, this thing does pretty well. On Untapped, 3.77. Beer Advocate, 3.89. Um, the aggregate score there was an 87. Very good. I don't think there... There might have been about 16 check-ins on Beer Advocate, but that's kind of par for the course. Um, untapped tends to have thousands, usually, where Beer Advocate's a little... Uh, less less representation, I think, because most people don't take the time to really fill it out. I have a little sticker on here. It says when it's canned, 10, 28, 21. So what is it now? We're February 6th or something. So, yeah, not too old. It's been sitting around a little bit, but nothing too crazy. I really like that they put that can sticker on there. A lot of times they stamp it, and you can't even read the stamp, and it's you know it makes it difficult. The other thing, I guess, some styles hold up a little better than others. This is a stout, so I'm not super worried about it. As to the color, this is black, as you'd expect from a Russian Imperial Stout. Um, opaque, I'm not seeing anything through this. I'm putting it up to the light, and it's quite bright outside because the sun's reflecting off the snow, and I don't see, I don't see anything. Now the head, kind of got two fingers worth. Nice kind of tan color head to it. Almost looks like the head on an oatmeal stout to me, because a lot of times the oatmeal ones, I think they kind of look uh, like frothy at the top, but you kind of see divots in it. That's kind of what it looks like to me. Let's give it a sniff. Pick up some roasty malt. Pick up some dark chocolate. Definitely a little bit of a coffee smell too. Um, but it's not super strong. I'm not a big coffee drinker. I don't really like, I don't drink coffee at all. I can tolerate it in stouts. But sometimes when they get too much of a coffee taste, they kind of lose me there. Now, I went onto the website and it said, it had the description for this beer. And it said you should be able to pick up citrusy hops, roasted caramel malt, espresso, burnt sugar, and chocolate covered orange. Now, I'm a huge fan of those chocolate covered oranges where you crack them and they break into the wedges. Can't say I've had one for years, but they're quite nice. If this delivers on all those things, I'll be shocked because that's a whole lot going on. Let's give it a try. Cheers.
Okay. First thing I pick up, body's pretty decent on this. Medium full. I think I was just complaining about this in one of the other videos that I did. Um, when you get a stout and there's no body to it, it kind of kills it for me. And that being said, I know everyone's going to say, well, what about Guinness, TK? I don't know. I accept Guinness. Guinness, the body on a Guinness to me is not like a stout's body, but probably because it's the first stout I ever had and first stout many of us probably had. I don't know. I, I somewhat um, come to accept that. But generally speaking, I like my stouts to be a little a little more full-bodied, a little thicker. And this one comes through. This is kind of on the, the medium full-bodied side. As the flavors, you pick up a couple of different things. Um, I think the first thing that I pick up immediately is kind of the, the roasted malt. Um, it's kind of like a, a burnt, kind of charred, malty kind of taste, which I quite like. Um, see what else we had in here. Espresso. I think, yeah, you could pick up the coffee type taste. Again, I'm not a huge um, coffee aficionado, so I don't really... I know, I think espresso, you drink in tiny little glasses or something, right? It's like co stronger coffee or something like that. I'm a tea guy. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but you definitely pick up the coffee taste. I, I will assume that that's the espresso thing that they're talking about. Um, as to the citrusy hops, you do pick up a little bit of a citrus counterbalance to the kind of like the roasty malt flavor. And it works. Um, I'm surprised. Citrusy hops and darker roasty malt for me generally probably wouldn't be a pairing I'd think of, um, but it does kind of work, and you do pick up the citrus notes. As far as the chocolate orange, I'm not picking that up. I wish to God I did, because that's, like I said, one of my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite things. Now, you do pick up a little bit of citrus, like I said, in the hops, but it doesn't taste like orange, to me at least. Yeah, all in all, this is a solid beer. Um... Roasted caramel malt. I, I don't know that I taste... Usually with the caramel malt, you get a kind of a, a sweet taste, and it tastes like caramel, not surprisingly. I'm not really getting that as much. I get the, the roasty flavors. I get the coffee flavor. Um, what else do we have? Pick up a little bit of the citrusy hops. Burnt sugar, I don't know that I'm getting that as much. I mean, like I said in the beginning, I think you get a little bit of a um, like a charred, roasty malt taste, but I don't know that it's a, a burnt sugar kind of thing, which I guess caramel is essentially just burnt sugar, right? Or cooked sugar that turns into caramel. Um, yeah, I mean, all in all, pretty decent. I, I, I wish that it had the chocolate orange taste or they didn't put it on the can because I think that's something, or I guess it's not on the can, but it's on their, their website because that's something when you see it, I say, aha, I want this, and you expect that flavor to shine through and it really doesn't compared to the others. Um, but, you know, all things considered, really good beer for sure. 3.77, 3.89 were the two ratings. I think that's pretty solid, um, you know, kind of a, a just under a four. And I think that's, pr I would probably give it a similar rating, probably a 3.75 or something if I was on untapped. Um, so, you know, pretty good beer overall. Thanks again, Wayne Allen, for sending this out. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I think one of these was also sent to Brian the Beer Snob. So if you check out his channel, there might be another review there. Uh, maybe he did pick up that chocolate-covered orange or some of the other notes that I didn't. Or maybe he's more of a, a coffee person. He can tell you if that is indeed espresso or if I'm just making stuff up because I don't know what coffee should taste like other than coffee. So, hey, um, big thumbs up for the beer. Big thumbs up to Wayne Allen for sending it out. And big thumbs up to everybody out there who took the time to like and subscribe. Greatly appreciate it. And I hope to see you all soon. Till next time. Cheers.